Good evening and welcome to Think Cincinnati. My guests this evening are Warren Joy, President of the Madeira Historical Society, Oscar Meyer, who's Mr. Madeira, I like that, and uh, Cliff Berriman, uh, who's the retired fire chief. Uh, for my good friends in the audience, as you know, uh, Hamilton County has many towns. Here we are in Madeira, just go right out 71, and uh, it's minutes from the center of town, yet you're in a different world. It's high up. It's really quite an exqui ex exquisite place. Uh, why is Madeira uh, called Madeira? It was named for a, an officer of the Marietta and Cincinnati Railroad, uh, which is now the B&O Railroad. And they formed uh, a line that ran from Loveland down to uh, Winton Place in order to get access to the city of Cincinnati. The railroad started in Chillicothe. And one of the members of the board of directors was John Madeira, who was a Chillicothe businessman. Is that right? Well, here we've got a nice piece of b &O railroad track and sort of took it along for the occasion. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people think Madeira is named after the islands of Madeira or Madeira wine. No connection? Uh, there may be a connection. Madeira means wood. It's Portuguese. And the family uh, ancestry of the Madeira family may go back to Europe, and it may be that they lived in a place where they cut wood or something of that sort. That's very interesting. Uh, you actually came from Massachusetts, yes. is that not correct? You've been there 10 years. But nearly everybody else in Madeira was born there right nearby. That's that about right. Either the, the <coughs> natives or the newcomers. Right. Well, now I want to ask Oscar a little bit about it. Uh, you're Mr. Madeira. How long have you been there? Well, I've been there 75 years. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, how'd your family get out to Madeira? Um, well, the family started on, in, which is really Indian Hill, down what's called the old traction line. It was country line, uh, country then. Of Part of the old foundation is still there where my dad was born, is which is right? where the riding trail is between Camargo Club Drive and, <coughs> and Camp Stepping Stone. Is that right? Mm -hmm. and so. Where'd they come from? Where'd your family come from? My, all four of my grandparents came from Germany. I have no idea where. So How'd they get out here to? Uh, don't know. Three of them died in two weeks in 1895. It must have been some kind of an epidemic. Right. So, so what business was your father in? Well, we had the George Meyer Company in Madeira for years. The you made charcoal, charcoal too, didn't you? Well, that was before, yeah. He started off as a charcoal burner and incidentally burnt, uh, uh, cut the trees and burned them into uh, charcoal on Shiny Run Road, which is now South Clippinger. Is he, that right? He did that before he was married, which is... It was married in 1892. Is that right? Of course, my viewers will all know that uh, they used charcoal in making whiskey, did they not? Well, they still call, you can still buy whiskey that says charcoal filtered. Is that right? Yeah. My great-grandparents were in the whiskey business. They probably knew each other. <laughs> <Good>. working. <laughs> it's really what, it's fun what a small town this is. Uh, Cliff, uh, Cliff Berriman. Cliff, you're the retired fire chief. Where were you born? I was born in Madisonville. How soon did you move to Madeira? Well, I moved to Madeira. I was only about a year and a half old when I moved to Madeira. You've been there ever since. Been there ever since. Yeah. It's really fun when you visit Madeira. It's a little city within a or a town within a much bigger region. The people uh, in Madeira, are like Wyoming and Glendale and Cheviot, you know, there they are, and that's yeah. theirs. And the loyalty is really quite exciting. And what I'm trying to do on this show is to visit different <clears throat> towns nearby. I'd like to get right to the pictures, uh, and we have a, we enter Madeira, you can enter a lot of ways, it's really quite a pretty town. Do you ever incidentally have open house when you invite the county to visit Madeira, parades or anything? No, they have an art show there in the last few years that, on the streets, which brings a lot of people. In yeah. May, <clears throat> Henry, every year. You know, all our different, Clifton does it, Avondale does it, uh, Glendale does it, uh, the Heritage League of Northern Kentucky, and I hope Madeira sometime will have a Madeira day and we'll all come visit Madeira. Yeah, we're certainly glad to have you. Particularly the railroad station. <laughs> I used to love that railroad station. Now, what is this? Well, that's a picture of John Madeira's hotel. He was a hotel owner in the city of Chillicothe. That building burned down in 1852 and uh, it was never rebuilt. He was moved that on. in the corner of Loveland and... Uh -huh. and no, this is in Chillicothe, Ohio, on oh, the I corner see. of Paint and 2nd Street. There is another office building there right oh, yeah. now. And then uh, whenever we're moving to Madeira. 
Yes, one of the early Good. buildings, really one of the earliest <coughs> known buildings. Oh, this is the cemetery. It's the last remaining uh, local cemetery in the city of Madeira. So whereabouts is that? Just well, it's south of Shawnee Run Road. Oh, yeah. Uh, so just east there. of Kenwood Road. Yeah, what are so, the earliest dates there? Uh, 1821. Is that and right? John Jones, who was a Revolutionary War veteran, yeah, was those buried there. Courageous people. Yes, they were the early settlers. They came up from Kentucky, oh, yeah. like a number of people <coughs> settled. And these uh, cemeteries, uh, each family had their own private burying ground. This is the last one remaining in the, within the city limits. You know, it would be very good for the history department to study a lot of these. Uh, the yes, people. the city, uh, the Cincinnati Historical Society has done quite a bit of work. Yeah. The schools were among the earliest institutions, and this is a picture of the first school building. It's built of stone, and it's probably the oldest house is it or still building. Accident? It still exists, well, it yes. Now? It's on Shawnee Run Road, up the steep hill, uh, west of the railroad tracks. Uh, when oh, Camargo yeah. Road, you right. go Camargo that Road. That comes from the tennis out. place. Now, has that been uh, it's a renovated private, so we can see it's a private residence? It's a private residence. I don't think it's open to visitors. Oh, that's too bad. We lose a lot of things that way. Well, now we've got a little list. This is a honey well, of a show. The <laughs> first church was actually formed <laughs> in the school building, but uh, around 1873, the Methodists uh, built this church. Uh, it's no longer standing, but it's not far from the Madeira Post Office. It's in that part of town. And what street is that on? Well, on the corner of Laurel and Center Street. Oh, yeah. Do they still use that? Uh, no, this building is no longer there. The oh, yeah. uh, congregation moved out of it and built a new building on the corner of uh, Euclid and Miami, which oh, is yeah. now the municipal building, right. the St. Paul Methodist Church. This was the first church building. And and then I think the next we have the Presbyterian Church. It's amazing how you can tell the history of towns uh, from the churches. Yeah. <coughs> Pres well, yeah. well, then they've another, given us the... This is another old building, the B&O Depot. Right. Uh, built either in the 1870s or the 1890s. And uh, it's one of the last stations on this particular line. It's one of the last stations on this particular line. Now, that's a market now, isn't it? Or is no, it it's... So uh, using as a station? The B&O owns it, but they do not use it. Uh, they lease it to the city of Madeira, and we, the members of the Madeira Historical Society and other local groups, meet there. It's a good-looking building. It's been repainted, and uh, this picture was taken when, Oscar? Early 1900s? Uh, uh, before, yeah, before the, yeah, before 1895. Oh, yeah. And now I guess we have the, uh, which church it's is The this? Presbyterian Church. This must have been taken this winter. No, that's <laughs> probably taken 50 years ago uh, in the middle of a winter. Uh, that building uh, uh, is no longer there. This is an old picture. What's the house next to it, Oscar? That was the manse, which was the Armstrong yeah. family, which is now where the Armstrong first... Armstrong Chapel? No. Well, part of the, it was many Same Armstrong's, family. yeah. Part of the family. Part of the family, and that's where the Fifth Third Bank is in Madeira. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a shame that we're... You know, most kids think that history started at 8 o'clock this morning because we destroy everything in the past. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, I hope your village, as the rest of the city, tries to preserve so we can teach that, you know, something came in the past. These courageous guys who built churches, built towns, built, did farming, made charcoal. They had great uh, orchards out there, too. Is that uh, right? The Ives seedling, is it? Uh, this is Madeira, <coughs> apple. Uh, we're trying to collect old photos to try to preserve this history, and this is some of the you have duplicates over at the Historical Society, uh, or are you going to keep yours separate out there? We will have a collection uh, on in our files eventually. Oh, yeah. Oscar Meyer here has been collecting them, putting them into an album. While that was there, I want to say that I went uh, through the sixth grade in that school. You went through this school. What was it like? Well, just like it was. <laughs> that building's been torn down. Um, but you went through school there? I went through, yes. How many of you in the classroom? Well, there was only, there was only three classes. Uh, I mean, the one teacher had uh, first and second and third. 
and then Miss Linder had fourth and fifth, and, and Z.T. DeMar was upstairs, had the whole upstairs, and he had six and seven and eight. He taught all three classes, all subjects. He taught my father, he taught me, <clears throat> he taught my brother, almost taught my wife, almost taught my kids. What did he, uh, how, many, how many different subjects did he teach to your recollection? Well, whatever you had. <laughs> did you name any of them? <laughs> Reading, writing, arithmetic, and you can yeah, write yeah. if you if you went through him. <laughs> how about geography, geography, yeah, history, language? Yeah, yeah. What did we pay a school teacher then? Oh, I don't have any idea. <laughs> Not very much. Not very much. <laughs> this yeah. is... Uh, that's, Zachary DeMar. That's the teacher. That's, that's a teacher. Zachary that's a, Taylor DeMar. Zachary Taylor DeMar. He was born in 1848, right mm -hmm. after the Mexican War. And that's, <coughs> I assume how he got his name. That's a nice name. That's yeah. taken in front of the train station. What do you know about his family? What have come of them? They, uh, there are DeMars in Indian Hill, Madeira. Oh, there's they, a DeMar Road, too. Yes, uh, they own land uh, south of Madeira. Mm -hmm. They came from Maryland. And he was, uh, he taught in Indian Hill, and he was superintendent of schools for a long, quite right? a number of years. He lived to be 98. Is that right? Who's this nice guy? This he was a, an excellent shot with a gun, too. Is that right? As I remember setting clay birds for him when he was quite an old man, and boy, he could really hit him. Yeah, for our viewers, why don't you explain, because not many people know clay birds anymore. You and I do, but not many others. Roger well, the maybe they was. Was well, might know it better if you thought of skeet, because <coughs> it's the same. Skeet shooting. It was a machine thing. that would throw a saucer up in the air. Yeah, a little clay disc, and we'd throw it up in the air, and then, uh, Shoot it. yeah, it would go off at a different angles. They didn't know which angle it was coming from, and then they would, they would stand at the shooting line, and they'd holler, pull, and then they would, the bird would go, and then they would shoot, of course. Now, again, for the viewers, it wasn't a real bird. It was an old piece of clay. A like piece of a clay, saucer. but it's called a clay bird. It yeah. was quite humane. Uh, really, wasn't even dangerous. No, it's, it's a sport which they. I haven't seen it for a long time, but they still do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sure. They do. Indian Hill has a shooting range now. Mm -hmm. and, sure. Well, that's in other words, they weren't shooting birds. They were shooting these clay things. Clay birds. And clay birds, and he. Uh, now, this is uh, Joseph Muchmore? Joseph Muchmore. And Muchmore Road, naturally, would be named after. He uh, was belonged to a <laughs> family, a large number of people settled in Madisonville and Plainville. Some of them, he was a shoemaker, and uh, he was the first postmaster of Madeira. He's no youngster either. How old is he there about? Oh, I don't know. He must he be was there a long time. <laughs> right. But it's, it's wonderful that all these roads are named after somebody. And I get so furious when they keep changing names uh, on streets when we, right. when we forget the guy whose farm it was. Mm -hmm. And he tilled that land with a wooden plow. Uh, Sam Drews. Another old residence. He was the first mayor of Cincinnati in 1910. Is that right? Samuel K. Drews. Uh, he grew up in Indian Hill, just north of Madeira, and uh, he was a Democrat, which is rather unusual for our town. <laughs> well, <laughs> was it even un unusual a hundred years ago? <laughs> it was an article I saw in the Old Enquirer uh, after one of the conventions, national mm -hmm. conventions, where the Democrats won. And uh, he uh, threw a big party in town and that, invited uh, all his cronies. And there. you haven't elected a Democrat since? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> There's been very few of them. Very few. <laughs> now, what year was that? I mean, that's a, that's 1910. 1810. <laughs> 1910. 1910. Well, that's not too good. That's 60 years. Yes. That's a pretty house. Whose house is that? That was the house of John Hosbrook. Uh, now, that's still standing. That's one of the prettiest houses in Madeira, it's right next to the fire station on Miami Avenue. Oh, yeah. It's, you'd call it Victorian <laughs> gingerbread style. And it was in, uh, it's, uh, about 100 years old, built about 100 years ago. Sort of Carpenter Gothic. That's an yes. exquisite house. It was and in. And that's privately owned? And maintained? It's now privately owned. Uh, it was in the Hosbrook family up until a couple of years ago. It was sold. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to visit the Hosbrook Pond. Oh, this, this is, is Hos road. Hosbrook Road. Oh, the road first. Yeah, well, okay. <clears throat> and where's that? Well, that's, uh, uh, Hosbrook Road runs uh, north of Euclid up to Montgomery Road. It was built uh, in order for the Hosbrook family to reach their farm. They yeah. farmed the land, and this was a boundary of their property. Now, this road is uh, still extant there. Oh, yes, uh, this is a paved, paved road. It's a paved road now with potholes like all mm -hmm. of the roads. Of course, Cincinnati was a big uh, carriage center. We made carriages here. 
Yes, and mm -hmm. I guess this is a dirt road. It was dirt up until when, the 20s? When did they start well, paving the roads? Oh, later than that. Later than that? I don't remember. In 21, they were still... Uh, it was gravel, but it, it wasn't was, mud. It wasn't mud. It was, it was gravel up until probably in the 30s. <laughs> Whose carriage is that? Anybody know? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> That's the main road to uh, to the shopping center today from Madera. Is that right? Today. Good. Well, now, we're over, uh, now we got the pond. Oh, good. Is you can tell them about there? that, Oscar. Yeah, um, I think... Uh, runs through my front yard almost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this particular road, and there's uh, another one here, will have the entrance and be the next picture. And this uh, walk was from Miami Avenue to Hosbrook Road. And the Hosbrooks lived on Hosbrook Road, but they came to Madera and went down on the railroad. Oh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> in from Cincinnati. to Cincinnati. And this is when... Now, that was a pretty good-sized pond when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and it was quite a place for kids to skate. And they'd sit on the thing there and put their skates on. But people come from Madisonville on the streetcar and so forth that just skate on that thing. Oh, yeah. So it was it was the big <coughs> thing around town. Now, this was... that that. <coughs> The, the bridge <coughs> that we've seen is halfway between, it's down the bottom of the hill, and they had a wheel there that used like a turnstile so that oh, you yeah. could go through without leaving the cows out. Uh, that's, I've never seen a style like that. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I guess that's, that's the only one. <laughs> this was still farmland at the time <coughs> the pond was there. They've <coughs> drained that and, of course, built houses in that property now. This, now. this picture here, you're on Miami Avenue, but the far end of it would be Hosbrook Road, as oh, far yeah. as you can see. <coughs> now we're going out, and that's attraction. This now is this is... Downtown Madeira, uh, 50 years ago, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. Mr. Muchmore's post office on the right. That Go was Muchmore uh, Hall, seriously. wasn't it? That was a yes. store and a... One, when I was a kid, it was just one story higher than that, and this, the train was real close to it and started shaking apart until about 1910 or someplace. They took the top floor off, oh, yeah. and it was an odd fellow's hall on the top. <clears throat> oh, I see. Originally. That, that view was south on Miami Avenue. This uh, view here is north on Miami Avenue, near the train station. And the big bank's over on the left now. Uh, that's yes. That's where the Hosbrook building is. Uh, Madeira Manor Miami. is in that field on the left. It's now where Madeira Manor stands. I often wonder if we're being overly sentimental or if this isn't really more aesthetic in a way. There's the trees and the village and all. It's really quite lovely. Those houses on the <coughs> right are still standing on the corner of uh, Railroad Avenue. <coughs> Well, that's, an that's where the, uh, it crossed the B and O railroad about a thousand feet west of the B and O depot. Oh yeah. And the traction <coughs> line crossed. And the traction line went from Norwood to Hillsboro. Every same. hour on the hour, both ways in Madeira, from like six twenty in the morning to eleven twenty at night. Oh yeah. This was built in the early nineteen hundreds and lasted oh, 10, 15 years. It was built about 1905, roughly, and went out about 1920. That's the traction building, that's what it's called. In fact, the bronze plaque up near the roof. That was a substation for the electric traction line and a passenger terminal. And later, the fire department. Yeah, uh, but uh, used space right after building. they, before it became fire department, it was. Uh, well, of course, you know, the buses took over from the traction line, went out, and that was used in as a bus garage for this. The name was Staley, and they ran the first buses to Madeira, and they used that the as gasoline a buses Gas horse gasoline horse. buses? Gasoline buses. That was after the, <coughs> when the traction line uh, went, ceased, why then the buses started, and they used that as a garage. Oh, yeah. Then it became, after that, several other people had garages in it, and then it became fire department property. You see why Madeira has developed a spirit. Now, this is police chief. First. Is that the first police chief? Yeah. How many years ago was that? Yeah. <coughs> probably around 1910, I guess. Probably. Oh, no, 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 way up in there. You look more recent than that car. What did you say, Cliff, <coughs> Well, they say he's credited with being the first uh, chief of police, but up until that time, uh, they had a, a, a town marshal. Oh, yeah. See, and... Fred Dorr, who was a chief of police there after after him, actually he had been a, a marshal before that. Oh, yeah. But they at that time at marshals they were elected. You see, see, but when they uh, became a, 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 a change of status there, well then they uh, had a 
chief of police, and he was the first one. You were the first to have a fire department. Uh, he's, he's the talker Tell us about the fire department. Well, the fire department was uh, organized about in 19, 1924 or something like that. But this is not our first engine. Uh, this was a th actually the third little piece of equipment they had. The first one started out to be a little two-wheel cart. They pulled by hooking it on the back of a little truck. <coughs> And then uh, about in uh, 1926, they had a real major fire in Madeira, which was at the Meyer Company, and they saw the need for uh, a truck. So in 1927, they bought their first piece of equipment, which was uh, an old Graham Dodge, and it had pumped about 300 gallon a minute. But this one you saw, was on this shown there was came along in 1930, and that was pumped 750 gallon a minute. What do they pump now, the big ones? Well, the ones we have now, they're capable, they're at 1,500. Yeah. The last two pump 1,500. Then you had one of the early ambulances. This is their first ambulance, which they had, and this was, came about in 1948. <coughs> and, uh, well, they saw the need for an ambulance, so they was uh, published that they ought to start a squad out there. So people contributed money, and this is what they bought with the amount of money they had, and this was a a Chrysler, and it was an undertaker's limousine. And it was modified, you see how it opens there, they had a center door, a post there that the doors hung on. Well, it was modified so that post would hang on that back door, and you could open oh, yeah. it that way. And uh, that served for quite some time until uh, about, mm, well, about 51. They bought a 51, but that was in 56. A rear loader because that was so inconvenient to load. Yeah, but that was hard. Very this is difficult. This hand pump gas. You pump it up and run down. Well, see, that was uh, one of the old garages there. Brown Brothers. Was that? That's Brown Brothers. Brown Brothers, and, uh, Brothers. Uh, I'm familiar with that, and that's our former barber that they called Slim, on the left, and you can't see the brown who's to the left there, and that's when you used to pump it up to the top and then let it go Literally by gravity right. into your car. It was one of the first garages in Madeira. Uh, if somebody knew something about automobiles, they might type that year. I don't know what year that is. My guess is the about 28. That looks like about a 28 Hupmobile or a 28 Rio. Yeah, could be. I guess right. No. But you know what I enjoy is the spirit about Madeira. You know, Madeira, Ohio. I got to tell you about this, and this is our first bank. It was written up in, uh, which is now, it was originally the Camargo Bank of Madeira, and which is now Fifth Third. But it was written up in uh, Ripley, and it, believe it or not, years ago, as being the smallest bank in the country. And after that, uh, it, we, it was a, a, a real estate man there for a short time. And then Dr. Madden, a well-known, he's not alive now, but a well-known veterinarian, he started there. He's and, that boy in the door there, his name is Pete Burry, who used to work for Dr. Madden. I said, what's coming with Pete, what's coming with Pete's family? Pete's, uh, uh, I guess he's around Lawlin or someplace. Right. Part of his family still live around there. Uh, oh, now we're up in the 30s. You can yeah. tell by the car. Uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's where the new uh, building alone will be that's on the right there. But the, the, the building on the left is quite a <coughs> landmark has been torn down. If you see, if you notice, it's real. It's a heck of a big building, and that was a grocery, uh, dry goods, and all that kind of stuff when I was a kid. Is Madeira growing much right now? Or is it Can't sort of go. Ain't no cheaper. place to go. Well, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Two new bank and savings and loans. Later on, the rear part of that became a post office. Is that right? Yeah. When the old Muchmore building was torn down, they, they moved the post office to the rear of that. The ice wagon? No, that's a... Let's see, uh, that's one of the latest pictures we just got. That boy there in the front there is called Brownie Morgan, and that was a James Blaine D. Marr milk wagon. Is there, is that the days you sort of ladled the milk out? <laughs> no, I think, I don't think we ever had that. I think, uh, I think they always had bottles. Had bottles the, yeah. That was, uh, he delivered about the time we got married, which is 1929, so that would be close to the time. Yeah. Oh boy, that's a nice car. Now that's the, that's the, the first a prominent grocer at that time, which is Herb Tice, and that was one of the first delivery trucks around the Dara. He had air tires, so that's pretty late. Yeah. After solid tires. 
That was really living. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very uh, progressive butcher. I mean, a uh, grocer. When he also did the butcher too. <laughs> when <laughs> automobiles came in, they had to rework all the roads, didn't they? Between uh, Madisonville and Madera at that time, there was two bridges, and each one of them made a 90 degree on each side. You went across, across this way, <clears throat> and then whenever this was, um, they put uh, concrete culverts in there and covered it up with dirt, and the uh, second man there from the right is, uh, happens to be my uncle. And then the, the one that you hardly ever see over here was Freddie Doerr, our chief of police. That was his father, uh, those, yeah. those two. Those mules or those horses? Those are all horses. Yeah. What are they doing, blocking the road? No, they're, they're plowing, putting the dirt down on oh, top of that there. Yeah, they're pulling. Now, that's my dad on the right, and that is a charcoal kill. Now, that was taken uh, not in Cincinnati, but uh, uh, it's very interesting if you don't know. You got a minute or so? Sure. Everybody wants to know how they burn charcoal. They cut the pieces in about four foot and they pyramid them like that and they leave a hole down at the bottom. And some way they get up on the top and they start that fire and it smolters for, I think, about two weeks. I'm no authority on that. And you have two tools you have the shovel and you have the poker. So whenever they need more fire. They poke more holes, and if it got to burn too much, they took the shovel and covered it up with dirt. And thanks to you, we have good whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, all whiskey's good. Some's just a little better than others. You lose, you lose your charcoal. Uh, we up to date now, or is this still back in? Uh, no, we had a uh, Missouri Historical Society had a uh, dinner meeting in 1975, and. We invited former mayors of, San, of Madeira to be our guests, and these are the ones who attended. And uh, I don't know whether we can remember their names. Well, I can tell you, the one, on the, they are. the one on the left is uh, uh, Al Swift, the next is Howard Bossy, That's next is Russell Brown, next is Jim King, right. and next is Russell uh, Patton, who's right over there. Good enough. I hope and, you... and then that's Dan McDonald, who it has right? got a lot of publicity. Well, this has been very enjoyable. I, I hope the kids will enjoy our history. I hope we might even make a, a tape of this for your school system. You've got a good school system out there, and they'll learn something about the past of Madeira. My guests this evening have been Warren Joy, president of the Historical Society, Oscar Meyer, who's Mr. Madeira, and you certainly are, and Cliff Berriman, who's the former fire chief. Thank you very much for joining WCET, and we'll see you again next week. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.